This video is going to cover installing the Pi Clone app on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's probably the first thing that you should install after <clears throat> um, installing Ubuntu onto the Raspberry Pi. And the reason it's the first thing you should install is because it lets you save your game by easily backing up the SD card that controls the Raspberry Pi to another SD card. So it lets you easily create backups, and that's why I call it saving your game. Uh, that way you don't have to start from scratch if you make a mistake or delete something at by accident, uh, which can be quite time consuming and frustrating. So this app really helps prevent a lot of the, the frustration. Now it comes by default on the Raspbian OS, but it does not on Ubuntu. So this uh, video is going to cover how to install PyClone on the Ubuntu operating system. So real quick, let me talk about that installation. There's a video uh, that I posted that already shows how to do this, but real quick, but that was like a canned video. So what I'm using is this Raspberry Pi Imager, which is the official uh, Raspberry Pi you know, application for, uh, for burning a, an image to an SD card. And the operating system that I recommend, um, once you install it and open it, uh, and you can, let me see, you can get that by going to, I believe it's raspberrypi.org slash software. And yeah, it's called the Imager, and you can just download the Imager. So once you've downloaded the Imager, the operating system that the Permissionless Software Foundation is focusing on is Ubuntu. So it's under Other General Purpose OS, Ubuntu, and then um, we're focusing on the desktop version. The server versions do not install a graphical user interface, so they're a little more advanced. But, uh, but yeah, the 64-bit desktop version, this version will probably change in the future. But yeah, this is made for the, the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400, which is our, our reference implementation. So you would select <clears throat> that OS, select a uh, SD card reader with, with at least 16 gigabytes. I like to use 16 gigabytes um, because it's small, so it's faster. There's not a lot of extra room on that. And so what I do is I'll plug in like a flash drive, a USB flash drive or another SD card in an SD card reader. And that's where I'll actually work from. So I'll keep my working data separate from the operating system data. Um, and that lets me, that makes it just faster and easier to back up if I use the, the smallest SD card that is practical for the OS. Right now that's 16, that's probably gonna have to increase to 32 in, in the near future. So anyways, that's just kind of a pro tip uh, for installing Ubuntu onto the SD card. <clears throat> Once that's on, you'll plug the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, fire up the Raspberry Pi. There will be a series of prompts that lets you set up Ubuntu. One thing I've noticed by doing this repeatedly is that uh, the Raspberry Pi may freeze. Uh, like it'll just be going along and then it'll just, everything will freeze and you'll have to unplug it and plug it back in. And what prevents that is the, um, is updating the system. So these, uh, the, the repository, the PyClone repository I'm gonna to cover today is, is this one. And it's, uh, it's on GitHub under my personal GitHub repository. So github.com slash Chris Troutner. And then there's a repository called PyClone. And this is a fork of the official Raspberry Pi Pi clone. Um, I haven't made any changes to the software. I've just updated the instructions. And so this is assuming that you have a fresh install of Ubuntu desktop. And these are the very first commands you should run after you connect to the Wi-Fi. Is this open a terminal and run sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. This upgrade is what will prevent the Raspberry Pi from freezing. And it may even freeze as you're trying to upgrade. So just reboot it and try and push through until you get the system fully upgraded. And that should stop the freezing. So that's another little caveat to remember. 
And so <clears throat> while I'm here, I might as well go through the rest of these instructions on how to install PyClone. So these are the dependencies that you'll need for PyClone. They set up the, the development environment. And what you have to do is build it from scratch. <clears throat> and then you'll, you'll clone this repository and then go into the, the directory that's created. And I had to push an update. There were some instructions missing. So after you install the dependencies, there's this optional uh, step where you can install open SSH server and net tools. This will let you access the Pi remotely, which I'm going to do right now. And the net tools package installs uh, if config. So if config, which will, which will tell you the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So on my network, that is 192.2.123. So I am remotely logged into my uh, Raspberry Pi. It's the four gigabyte memory edition. And I can see I've got about six gigabytes left on the SD card. And then from here, you can follow the rest of these steps, or I, I could follow the rest of these steps. I've already done this, so I'm going to go through this very quickly. But you would clone this repository, go into that repository. In fact, uh, I'm just going to do that right now. So clone the repo, and then... Um, run this autogen script and this is going to create several files one of them is going to be a file called configure and it'll be executable okay so yeah you can see there's actually several config files but it's this configure one that that we're going to want to run so with the full name and uh, it's assumed that before you run this, you have installed these dependencies. That step will fail if you have not run, if you've not installed the, the dependencies for the development environment. So run that, and then the config should complete without any errors. And then you can run make. And this is essentially compiling the app. And then finally, uh, you can run sudo make install and that will install the compiled app into the system and then to to run to run the actual pi clone you will uh, you'd run sudo dbus launch pi clone so um, I, I'm not actually familiar with what the dbus launch command does, but it is necessary on Ubuntu. It's not used on Raspbian, but it is necessary on Ubuntu. And then this will launch the PyClone graphical user interface, which I'm uh, in the next video I'm going to show how to install uh, real VNC, so I'll actually be able to show the desktop of the Raspberry Pi. But um, it's probably it's important to install this before that so that if something goes wrong, Again, you can easily get back to a good known starting point. Um, but, the, but this command will launch the PyClone GUI. It's a pretty simple graphical user interface. You just select the SD card that's running the operating system. You select an SD card that you plug in with an SD card reader, and you hit go. One of the caveats here is um, you can only copy an SD card to one that is the same size or bigger. If it's even like a few bytes smaller, uh, it won't copy. The copy will like fail. And so for that reason, it's a really good idea to buy like a 10 pack of micro SD cards uh, because then they'll all be exactly the same size. And, uh, and that makes it really easy to, to have several different backups. Um, and as you know, as you progress and as you develop, you're definitely going to, you know, install things that you wish you hadn't installed and 
copy code that you wish, you know, that's just sort of takes up space and you forget about it. So that's why these these backups are, are really handy. And that's why I, I emphasize this is like probably the first thing you should do after installing Ubuntu.